And we did it. How <laughs> we did it, bro. Oh, we, we saved the black race. <laughs> Today we saved the black race. Hell yeah. I feel good. We did our part to make sure that black people was just for in America for another uh, four years. Yes. Because if black men didn't vote, then we wouldn't be on the exit polls. And they'd be like, well, black men ain't going to show up. And if we don't show up, they won't even talk to us. And so to get into the political game, we got to have a political conversation. Hey, what was the process like? That was a whole different experience. Hey, you know what? The process was actually pretty good. Uh, I feel like every time I go vote, it gets easier. I did bring my voter's registration card, but I just it was already attached to my license. They just verified that I still stayed at the same place. Cool. I got a printout. I actually walked over to the electronic uh, system ballot or whatever, and I put my paper in there, slid it in. The paper thing was wild. I was like, what the hell is this paper you thing? You know, I kind of feel like that was like that. Though. I feel like they've been doing that as of late. I kind of feel like they've been versus just it, it being digital because I believe, you know, they try to say that you can manipulate the digital outcome. So they take the paper, make sure it's right, and then you cast your ballot that way. So I could kind of see where that's going. How, how do I know? How do, oh, damn. How do I know that, uh, they don't just take my ballot, put it in there, and just go straight to a shredder, and they just say whatever they want to say. I mean, this is political theater. Like, I, I, I think it's important to vote at the exact same time. I'm like, political action means so much more than just going to go vote. Like, I'm glad that we had this experience to come vote together and to document this because it shows that hey, we really do stand on this political rhetoric and the process of participating in this American economy. It's great to man, I feel good to be an American, bro. <laughs> I don't want to live in a place where they just tell me who I got to vote for. But uh, the Democratic Party, they said we just got to vote for Kamala. How does hey, that make you feel? Hey, I want to also say this, too. Bro. <laughs> you don't have to vote a straight ticket. I didn't vote a straight ticket. Like, there were places I knew I would go Republican. There were places I knew I would go Democrat. Some places it just kind of made sense. Like, I don't really know this guy. I know this guy politics. So I'll go with him. He happens to be a Democrat. Like... Also, knowing Europe, okay, so you also have local elections. Some strategy, you better listen. There's local elections here. So judges. you got to know judges. You got to kind of know how that may affect you. Hey, some people, hey, some of them Supreme Court positions, I ain't going conservative. Hey, listen here. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. It was 73 pages. I was like, holy Christ, man. I didn't memorize all of these. I mean, I knew the top of the tickets. I knew some of the bonds. But hey, some of those 50 people, I didn't know. So look, this is what I did. Those checks and balances. Number one, Donald Trump, baby. I voted for the. I voted for uh, Make America Great Again. And I think that's going to take collective effort of everyone working as hard as they can to make America the most bestest place possible. That's my political speech. Get mad at me if you want to. I did. It's already done. I cast my Bella, I cast my ballot. I want to do a happy dance because I did the damn thing. And number two, when I said about Kamala, hey, y'all didn't pick her to be a Democratic nominee. They just put her in front of you and said, hey, this is who it is. And that made me feel a certain type of way. And so, like, my strategy was that since I'm voting for Donald Trump, and I don't like machines talking to me. The Democratic Party's for machines telling me what I can and can't do. And I'm for freedom. Right. <laughs> My brother said, "You got the freedom to put that seatbelt on." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this, this doggone car must be a Democrat. <laughs> Black man, put your seatbelt on, or else you're gonna be doomed. Bro, why are you driving a racist car that made me put my seatbelt uh, on? The car is white. I'm just saying. The car is white. That's crazy. You got a white supremacist vehicle that tried to tell me I got to put a seatbelt on. If we want to play this game all the way out, anytime something, anytime I don't like something, anytime I don't like something, I just say it's racist, huh? The same way that you know, anytime a woman says something, she just says it's sexist. I want look. The Democratic Party it terrifies me, and I think that the same way when Barack Obama got in the office, they used him to pass things that I don't agree with. They didn't match with my lifestyle, my upbringing, my my Christian values. We talk about Christian values. I believe in uh, Christian values. I do. Hey, can you just go straight, if you don't mind? Hell yeah, we just go right in because we finna go upload this video off of Scott Street, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, bet that, bet that. We got we to gotta put this out right now. This is like live because early voting matters and we're doing it right now. And uh, wow. And when you're out here in the hood, you just see police officers. We came off of MLK. There's a statue of MLK in McGregor Park right here. And they over here jacking up. They jacking up. Just a homeless man. That's a homeless man. The homeless man ain't got nothing. Homeless man just got a basket. They got two police cars for a man in a basket in an empty park who's <laughs> harassing the sidewalk. That makes me feel as uncomfortable. They talk about Trump's policing policies. Uh, as a man, 
if you live in a community and you see something happening, you have to regulate your community. And by being present, being just a, an effective man, presence matters. From the military, I learned just just being awake, just being aware and attentive to a situation, it deters crime, it deters bad behavior. A male presence, it deters bad behavior. And when we understand these things, just naturally as people, our society understands that a bigger person is more powerful. Then when you just when I look at the leader of the free world, I, w I would like a person I look up to, salute, has accomplished things that I want to accomplish. For me personally, I just don't think that she's aspirational. There's a mosque over there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it must be the nation because they'll see this. The hey, it's a it's a mosque. Crescent moon. You got the new VA coming up over hey, here. I love that. I ain't gonna lie. We need that. I, hey, invest in your veterans because we invested in this nation. So let me ask you a question, man. What's up, what do you bro? think about the police immunity? Everybody's talking about how, you know, because I voted for Trump today, too, at the Trump Black Madonna. Man, you know I voted for Donald Trump, too. So you know what? <laughs> there, so I'm voting for police immunity, and I'm voting for slavery again. So do you think that the police immunity is an issue? Do you feel like he's really going to be able to give police that type of immunity and that he's going to make the military somehow polices. I mean, you know, you've heard all kind of wild stuff. I'm going to give you my honest, natural response, okay? I don't. It's our job as the constituents to hold our elected officials accountable. And if ever Donald Trump does something that we don't agree with, we have to stand up. Hey, we want to we want to mobilize 10 million men to stand up for men's rights. When I say men's rights, I'm talking about egalitarian rights. Every every law that's good for a woman is also good for a man. A man. We're two human beings and we're just trying to exist, especially in this free market system. And so if you have any type of sexist slant to any type of legislation, that disadvantages me. I'm a father. This it disadvantages my children. And I just want everyone to be on an equal playing ground. Hey, every feminist in America, you should agree. Like those policies should agree a more egalitarian America, a more egalitarian society. Oh, we're gonna make a left side. Maybe we're gonna we ride through the hood, boy. Yeah, we, we, boy, what? South Seal for Lil, man. We all through this neighborhood. And it's funny. This is what I needed Obama to see. I needed Obama to see a black man like me from this experience that inherited this experience and that can articulate my political views and points in the way that I'm doing it. You need to be talking to me, sir. You are talking to a made up group of people that do not exist. You need to be talking to this man right here while he's even having to be out here. Because remember we said, we don't have the money. You're not talking to us. You're not talking about putting infrastructure in our neighborhoods the way we need. You're not talking to me. The Democratic Party hasn't talked to me yet. Look. The scenery in the black community is hilarious. Uh, Dave Chappelle had a joke. He said that they were sitting in the neighborhood who was in a limousine. And uh, all you saw was crackheads scurrying around. Just crackheads running by everywhere. And respectfully, I don't want to call them crackheads. I want to call them, uh, they really enjoy narcotics. And as we go down these streets, that's what we see a whole bunch. When you come down by the transit center, uh, you see a bunch of homeless people. And then what we got over here, when, when we look out in our community, we get... Maybe we got a bank, we got a PLS so people could cash a check because, you know, a lot of black folks ain't got no bank. And then we got to got to go to the beauty shop. Got to get your hair done. That's 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 a staple in the black community. You know what that used to be? That used to be a grocery store. That used to be H-E-B. And when you want to kill a community, all you got to do is shut down the grocery store. Because now they shut down the grocery store, and now gentrification is coming. And now they're about to shut down the elementary school. And when they shut down the elementary school, the community is dead. Why do they why do they dislike children so much, man? And I, I'm not trying to be rhetorical. Like they really are, they have an attack on babies, and it, they say it's economical. But I believe in family. I believe in the conventional family. So the Democratic Party has already expressed to me that they don't mind killing babies and that they don't mind dis dismantling the conventional family. They don't talk about putting together the conventional family. What they want to put together is alternative families. Families that do not procreate. Families that do not bring a uh, conventional civilization together. Something that really works for our community. They just don't have it. Oh, there's a church again. <laughs> like, dude, all these churches and where is that money going to? Like, look at the look at the financial. Like, what are we doing we're over here? Make a left right up here. We're gonna make a left again. Right here, then on Driftwood. And the house is gonna be. I ain't gonna tell you where I live at. Stop playing. Stop trying to watch where my house is at. We live over here, but we out here. 
hey, we participated, we voted, we had a conversation about the politics. Man, hey, go vote and vote, vote right there. <laughs> vote for what you believe. The greatest American life.